This is my full review of the 2022 Honda Civic Turbo RS. Firstly, I'm going to do a quick walk around of the vehicle to show you all the features of the RS model. So firstly, up front, what we have is the RS badging here and a black grille. It gives it a slightly more sporty feel to it. Front lights are full LED. This includes the low beam, high beam, turn signals and daytime running lights. You also get LED front fog lights as well. Looking at it round the side, you do get the standard Honda Civic shape, but what's different are the 17 inch wheels in a satin black color. You also get gloss black wing mirrors as well. The window trim is in a matte black with gloss black pillars, and you also get gloss black handles as well. Around the back, you get RS badging as well and a gloss black rear spoiler. You get LED rear lights with brake lights. The indicators are incandescent and so are the rear reversing lights. You'll find that this area here is also slightly smoked as well to give it that sporty kind of feel. Down below here, this is the RS design bumper. You also get some black trimmed dual exhausts, which are finished off in a stainless steel housing. Under the bonnet, you get a 1.5 litre single turbo engine. This is a four cylinder double overhead cam with 16 valves on it. You also get 178 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque. This is all paired to a CVT gearbox. It does have uh, stepped gears if you redline it, but if you're driving normally, it will hold it at a certain rev range, giving you maximum power. Inside the new Civic, it's a very nice place to be. Firstly, you get this beautiful 10.2 inch screen up here, giving you all your driver information. It does show analog dials in a digital form, which you can customize slightly, and that does change if you put it into eco mode or sport mode. The infotainment system is a nine inch touchscreen. It also does have physical buttons on the side and a physical audio control button as well, which is very handy to have. You do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on it, and the RS comes with satellite navigation pre-installed. I have tried this system out and it works pretty well. You can connect your phone and use the Google Maps as well, and this works just fine. Some important features to note in the RS trim is firstly, you do get gloss black going throughout it. So that's on the steering wheel, it's on the door cards. It's also on throughout the dash. Honda Civics come with this hexagon shaped styling through here. Um, it looks okay, it's quite nice and functional. One thing I did want to point out is maybe after a while this starts to hold dust in there. I don't know how this would be cleaned. Uh, something that you can look at further on down the line. These are the air vents here, which are quite a nice touch. Actually very functional with these buttons that you can hold here, easy to move around. The dials here are very high quality and crisp. I do like the silver style on it and you've got the aircon buttons here. One thing I do like about the car is that you can control all the climate control physically here through buttons instead of uh, touch sensitive buttons or on the screen. Here we have a 12 volt socket and two USB-C ports. One of these will be used to plug in your phone to operate the Android Auto. You also get a wireless charger down below. Gear lever here is covered in a synthetic leather with red stitching going through and then you have your driver mode changes button down here as well. You have brake hold and an electronic parking brake. One thing we do have here is this rough looking plastic. I think it's meant to give it a sort of a carbon fiber feel with it. It seems okay. By looks of it, it does scratch quite easily and hold some holds uh, dirt and marks on it as well. Again, maybe you could probably change this or something later on or just live with it. Center armrest is very comfortable. The seats work very well. In the RS trim on the new Civic, you do not get full leather. It is a part leather, so it is suede and leather, but they are very comfortable and the seats are electric as well. Headliner is black. You get all black trim up here. If you 
feel that it's too claustrophobic, then maybe you go for a lower spec trim, but I think it's very nice. Essentially, the Honda Civic is a family car, so rear seating room is important. Now, I'm just over five foot 11, and I've got the seat right where I have it, and it's most comfortable for me. Sitting in the back, I have just enough toe room and knee room here. I could sit here for a long journey. The seats here are very comfortable. Headrests are a bit hard, not as soft as what you would find in the Accord, but that's in a different segment. You do get two USB-C ports here. The turbo models do not come with rear air vents. You do get rear air vents in the hybrid models, which have been released slightly later on. Again, you get a part synthetic leather seat with a suede center here. If you've got young kids, maybe this is not the correct choice for you. You want to go for a full leather package so you can wipe down any mess as well. The gloss black trim follows throughout and you get rear electric windows and split speakers so you get a tweeter and a mid-range at the bottom as well. Is the Civic 2022 bigger compared to the previous Civic FC? The new Civic FE is 48 millimeters longer, three millimeters wider, one millimeter lower and has a 35 millimeter longer wheelbase. The fuel tank capacity in the 2022 Honda Civic is 47 litres. The Honda Civic has always been a very capable car and a really good vehicle to drive. Around the globe it sells hundreds of thousands of vehicles and to be fair it is the perfect family car. Now what Honda do sometimes is they create a sportier version of that family car and this is what we have here it is the normal Civic with the 1.5 litre turbo engine in it but it's had a few sporty modifications put on it so for example the you know the wheels the exterior you get these fantastic sport seats which are part leather part suede and you get a black headliner as well which feel, makes you feel cocooned and that you're in some sort of a sports car it does work what they haven't done is they haven't messed around with the suspension so you do get a very nice smooth ride which i think is going to appeal to people who buy this type of vehicle Driving this car around now, I've been on longer journeys and on motorways, and I will say that the, the seats are very comfortable. You're not gonna feel any fatigue. The rear seats are large enough. If you are a bigger family, then maybe an Accord could be better for you, but for a medium-sized family, say a couple with two small children, this is gonna be adequate enough. The boot space is big enough for you to carry luggage around on longer journeys no problem at all. Driving this on the motorway was very effortless and I found that the active cruise control lane keeping assist worked very fine. You, you can turn down the sensitivity of it as well. I did feel that the brakes were a little bit harsher than driving the Accord. I don't know why this is, maybe they've updated the, the system here or they've made it slightly more sensitive. I found that as it came up to traffic, it tended to brake a lot harder. Therefore, you would feel it and the cars behind you were braking harder as well. Maybe that's just with the, the Civic because the Accord, that felt a little more subtle, the active cruise control. The CVT gearbox is okay to drive. When you put your foot down, there's uh, plenty of power. It goes quite fast, picks up nicely. You will find that because it is a CVT gearbox, it's going to work and find that ultimate torque and power band and then keep you at that rev. If you do floor it, then that's when you'll feel the stepped gearbox coming in so this is electronically done to give you the feeling of having gears that's okay this isn't a vehicle that you're going to redline everywhere you go it's just the way it's designed it's more of a it's more of a cruiser around town a commuter 
it's very good at that that's what its job is for but it's for people who you know they want a bit of sporty styling on it this vehicle here is in a uh, ignite red with uh, black bits all around it so you know it makes it feel like it's a, a young person's car who may not necessarily want type r suspension and to be you know have their back shattered as they're driving around this would also see, suit an older buyer as well you can get these in subtle colors like uh, silvers and grays as well and you know it's it's a very capable car fuel economy is pretty decent as well because of the the small engine in there and talking about that small 1.5 engine is great because you get decent enough power out of it but it's also lightweight as well and you can really feel that in this car you feel it more in the Accord actually when you're driving it the car doesn't feel front heavy like if you had a two liter engine in it or the hybrid drivetrain system in there so it feels very nimble when you're steering so as you are driving through any country lanes or nipping in and out of traffic you find that this is very easy to drive. The driving position is fantastic in a world where everyone's driving SUVs and crossovers and even normal saloon cars are starting to be built on slightly higher platforms. Honda haven't done this. This vehicle is low to the ground. It feels low and sporty when you drive it. And for me, I think that's fantastic. You really feel like you're cocooned in this car. The mirrors feel up high and as you're, you're driving it you feel you know sporty i think that this is one of the main selling points of the new civic that they haven't gone that way of raising the ride height of it overall my feelings about this car is this is definitely one of the best compact sedans that you can buy on the market is actually better than the toyota corolla as well and for anyone who's thinking of buying like a golf or other european vehicles i think this should be definitely top of your list thanks for watching my video and please subscribe for more car and truck content